Hello, good afternoon. My name is Anne Iveson and I'm here this afternoon with David Jeffrey, who is Head of Europe at Stepstone. Thank you, David, for coming to our symposium today and being on a fantastic, uh, controversial perhaps, slightly, but uh, interesting panel on the LP and GP dynamic. Could you just tell us maybe how has the LP dynamic changed, especially since the financial crisis? Sure. Thank you, Anne, and good afternoon. It was a enjoyable and always controversial panel um, with Jeremy, so I enjoyed it very much. But just to summarise, the key things how I would describe the LPGP dynamic, particularly since the financial crisis, have changed maybe three or four, three or four overall areas. The first one, from the LP perspective, the LPs, um, I would say, overall have become more fickle. The reality is people are chasing the best funds. When I look at the overall GP landscape, there really has been a bifurcation between what I refer to as the haves and the have-nots, and no more apparent is that than in the European landscape, probably more so than the US. So what we're really seeing is a flight to quality, I guess I would call it, whereby some of the very, very best funds are not only having very quick closings, some of them even on an, an invitation-only basis, but also some of them with maybe premium terms. So you're seeing that LPs are maybe cutting away historical relationships and trying to chase the old-fashioned word access, getting into the very best funds. And so we're seeing a, a, a real flight to quality in that regard. As it relates to the GP community, unsurprisingly, the same mirrored effect, whereby um, many of the have-nots, if you like, are spending even longer in the market. So we're seeing people who have been fundraising for maybe 24 months or more. I think the latest statistic I saw is that less than a third of the funds get closed within the first 12 months, which means that two thirds of the fund, funds are raising money well into their second and sometimes third years. So they're offering, um, as we heard on the panel, sometimes discounts, not necessarily to encourage people in, but to help prioritize people's timing. Um, but even significant changes in terms to try and encourage investors in. But at the other end of the spectrum, again, as I indicated, some of those GPs are not only keeping to the old 2 and 20 model, but even the very best firms are still charging premium economics to both the fees and the carried interest. So it's an interesting dynamic from a GP perspective. The other interesting thing that's happened since the financial crisis is the intermediary community, and particularly the placement agent community. Again, we referred to this afternoon, there's a couple of things that are happening. On the one hand, we're seeing, because of many, many of them started off in the banking world, they're spinning out and starting up newer, hungrier shops. On the counter, the reality is, particularly in the US, many of these placement agent firms cannot represent their clients within the institutional community. And so we're finding them much more active on, in Europe and the rest of the world, helping to identify the smaller, lesser known managers on behalf of the client universe. So overall, that's how I would describe the overall shift. And as I referred to earlier on, the only sort of nostalgic footnote, if you like, I would say, is a, 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 a harking back to the old days of what I really described as partnership, which underlined the whole limited partner, general partner dynamic, whereby limited partners tended to back franchise firms, helping them grow through the good and the bad times. And of course, the same thing with general partners whereby they stuck with loyal supporters that have put them in business. Clearly, we're in a capital, capitalist market where supply and demand is king, and that, to a certain extent, has certainly changed significantly since the, the financial crisis four or five years ago. So, when someone asks the question, what's changed not only since 2008, but in the last 10 years, what would your answer be to that? Well, it's an interesting one, and as was referred to earlier, the reality is there hasn't been a huge fundamental change. There hasn't been a seismic shift. The fundamentals are still very much the same. Yes, there's been downward pressure maybe on fees, and yes, there's been more coordination, particularly by the ILPA that, as we heard earlier, has done a fantastic job of coordination. But the reality is supply demand still, still rules the world, and people ultimately, if they have to get into the funds or the opportunities they want to get into, um, will do what it takes, um, mostly. And so, if that means paying more economics or discarding your, your, your hard-found principles, the reality is those GPs can command those economics or command those terms. And one last point, on co-investment, 
uh, do you see this as a growing trend or again do you see it as a growing trend for those LPs that perhaps choose to go in not the top firms because they don't have the access? How, or how do you see the trend progressing? It's definitely a growing trend and it makes a lot of sense. The reality is the, the world of co-investment has come full circle. Fifteen years ago it was a relatively new form of um, doubling down if you like or getting incremental access to deals that you like at lower economics. Then many institutions, many LPs effectively wanted to join, jump on the bandwagon and um, get access to co-investment, particularly if you think about the leakage that they had otherwise if they were just investing primary capital and not taking full advantage. The reality as we came full circle is that many of those LPs realized that actually to do co-investments well, you had to have a dedicated team of people and really understand what you were doing to basically make sure that you sorted the wheat from the, sh ch the chaff. And that was not necessarily always easy for institutions that either didn't have the money, the time or the resource to be able to do that. So what we found is that, as I say, it's come full circle whereby most GPs now have a select handful of preferred co-investors because fundamentally what the GP wants is certainty to close. And so they need to be able to transact with institutions, LPs, who understand the co-investment model and can execute alongside them. Perfect. Thank you very much indeed. Thank, Thank you. you.